what sucks is uh I don't know if you use XSplit, but whenever I record something locally, it fucks up the first like 20, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So I have to edit that out later on. Whatever. <clears throat> okay. Pre show prep. Actually, I'm going to take off my sweatshirt real quick. And I'm going to get rid of this ghetto accent. <laughs> I'm going to take this sweatshirt off real quick. Uh huh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Actually, why don't we just. Mm. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Wait, wait. I forget what the fucking scenes are. Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Okay, there we go. So we got one, two, and six. I'll remember that, sure. Okay, guys, we're going live real quick. Bam. Hey guys, welcome to the AOS Station, a weekly show about the AOS slash MOBA genre, which includes Dota 2, Heroes of New Earth, League of Legends, and Bloodline Champions. I'm Tom, our host today, and unfortunately Noah isn't here today, but uh, we will have another host on next week, and let's get into it. So the first uh, thing to talk about today is the Dota 2 information. There was a new patch out uh, this week that talks about their new Dota 2 test build, which is what we talked about last episode, where Dota 2 is breaking up the beta into a stable version and a test version. And all they're saying right here is that the information, all, all the patches from the test version will go over to the stable version within a week if it's stable. So if you're playing the stable version, you're going to have a week, uh, a week's late uh, patch notes. So, talking about patch notes, we have the patch notes for this week right here. And the hero that they added to the game today, or this week, was Bane Elemental. And if you're not familiar with Dota or Dota 2, Bane Elemental, or Heroes of Earth for that matter, Bane Elemental is pretty much the epitome of crowd control. All of his abilities, minus one, in some way crowd control your opponent. Um, his first ability siphons, it, it actually doesn't necessarily siphon. Uh, when you come to like coding terms or game mechanic terms, uh, the, the word siphon means something completely different from what it does. But what it does is it steals health. But code-wise, what it does is it, it removes health and gains health. And that's actually important when it comes to game mechanics and how things interact with other things. Especially in Dota 1 because it's limited by the Warcraft 3 engine. Uh, but besides that, that's his, the, the, he, all of his skills are crowd control abilities. He has an ability that lowers a target's attack damage, so that's good for hard carries or pretty much anybody anybody that hits you in the face you want to toss that on. He has another ability that makes a person fall asleep, and that deals, I believe, true damage uh, per second. And the problem with uh, well, not the problem with that, you can toss that on a target if you just want to disable them. Uh, but it also works works uh, against you because if you attack the target that's sleeping, you fall asleep instead and it removes the debuff so it can be a defensive debuff as well as an offensive debuff because when you're sleeping uh, I believe physical damage are, uh, is negated completely but you can take magic damage if you take magic damage though the debuff is completely removed um, from the target obviously so a defensive way to cast it on yourself would be to uh, a defensive way to use it is to cast it on yourself to negate an attack, and that which would also disable the person who was attacking you. You can also use it offensively by sleeping a person and waiting for your team to you know crowd around them, kind of like Yules or um, yeah, Yules or Astral Imprisonment, which was actually added to the game uh, last week. And his other ability, oh, those are his three main abilities, and then his ultimate ability. Why is my camera not moving? Is my camera not moving for everybody else who's on stream? 
Hmm. Are we having technical issues? <clears throat> okay, there we go. Much better. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. <laughs> we are doing the show live, by the way. So if you want to check us out live, you can check us out on twitch.tv slash the AOS station every week on Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, this light is incredibly hot. I feel like Mike B. Eh, I'm almost sweating. Um, too much information, Tom. Too much information. And back to what we were talking about. Bane Elemental's ultimate is basically similar to Devour or Pudge's ultimate in that it holds the target still, but it's a channeled ability. Except in this guy's case is it's ranged. So he can grab a guy from afar and hold them still. And it's actually gone through a bunch of different iterations over time. So I'm not actually familiar with the way it currently is. But it's some form of either deals damage per second or deals damage per second and siphons mana or steals health per second. It's it's changed, you know, um, throughout Dota 1's history. So I don't know which uh, is the actual um, is the actual ability they ended up with because I haven't played Dota 1, uh, Dota 1 in so long. <clears throat> Excuse me. Other things that are noteworthy are a bunch of no uh, bug fixes and this actually. I wanted to point this out. I thought this was funny. Uh, they fixed Essence Aura, triggering on uh, zero cooldown abilities, like Ball Lightning. And I thought this was funny, because I used to make AOS and MOBA games for Warcraft 3. And this seems like something that, like, not a bug necessarily, but just something that they totally forgot. Because I remember doing stuff exactly like this. Coding something, and thinking, you know, you were perfectly fine, and then noticing that you completely forgot, like, one if-then statement. Um, so that was, a, that, you know, I thought that was kind of lulzy seeing it from a, a game designer's point of view. Um, and they restored it. They, they restored it. <laughs> they restored a previous uh, mechanic. I'm not familiar with it, though. The double double blink click behavior. If I had a host on, uh, which I don't, uh, they might be able to say something about it, but I'll just go on. And they added Outworld Destroyer to Captain's Mode. Pretty much what that means is they're good with Outworld Destroyer. Um, when a hero is added to Captain's Mode, uh, it usually means that all their bugs are pretty much fixed, and they're pretty stable and balanced. And this isn't actually very uncommon for Dota 2, simply because the heroes have had so long to be balanced in Dota 1. So, it's, you know, it's not really surprising at all, but once they start creating new heroes, it'll probably take them a lot longer, excuse me, to get to Captain's Mode. Uh, and if you're not familiar, Captain's Mode is actually a special mode in... Dota, Dota 2, and I believe Heroes of New Earth. It's been so long, I don't remember. Um, but what it is is that your uh, your captain, the first player on each team, gets to choose the heroes for the team and then give them out to each hero. So it, it's kind of like a tournament. Um, it's like a tournament only mode, pretty much. But um, I don't actually know if tournaments use it or not. But it seems like the way to go. And uh, on that note, we're going to go over to the League of Legends. And the thing to talk about today uh, in the League of Legends front is the new hero, who we actually predicted on the show last week. So if you're if you're watching, you got a heads up a week early. But the new hero is named Fiora, the Grand Duelist, and she's, as Noah said last episode, a fencer. Um, blah blah blah. No one cares about lore. I'm sorry if you care about lore. <laughs> not not Josh Allen, but you know, yeah, that that thing. Um, let's go over her abilities real quick, and then I can tell you what I really think about her. First of all, her passive ability is called Duelist. When she hits somebody, she gains health, and if you hit a champion, it stacks. Easy, easy enough. And it's not just base health, it's health over time. Over six seconds, to be precise. Her first ability is Lunge, where she dashes forward uh, to strike her target, dealing physical damage, and she can do it again within a couple seconds at no cost, uh, mana cost to her. So that seems really similar to something like Renekton's dash, I forget what it's called, I think Slice and Dice, or, or, or Slash and whatever. And you can see that Captain Awesome is now playing Realm of the Mad God. You guys should go kick his ass. Um, <clears throat> her second ability is... Oh, you guys are going to kill me if I mispronounce this, aren't you? I know Noah would kill me if I mispronounce this. I think it's Repo... Rip I don't want to, it's not pronounced repost. I'm pretty sure it's not pronounced repost. So if you're a big fence junkie, just, you know, put in the right pronunciation there. Uh, she gains attack damage, which is, it's, I guess it's a self buff. And when activated, 
she parries the next basic attack and reflects magic damage back to her attacker. And this works against champions, monsters, large minions, etc., etc. Blah, 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 blah. It's kind of, kind of, you know, expected for that name. Her third ability is Burst of Speed, where she gains attack speed. <coughs> Excuse me. And each basic attack or lunge she lands during the time increases her movement speed. Killing a champion refreshes the cooldown. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, but let's go on to the ultimate ability, which is Blade Waltz. And I'm um, not going to be subtle here. This is just Omni Slash from Dota 1. But if you're not familiar with Dota 1, you're going to have to uh, listen to me. She, pretty much she dashes around the battlefield, dealing physical damage to enemy champions, and successive attacks against the same target deal less damage. Um, yeah. It's pretty much just like Omni Slash, but if you guys really want to know what I think about it, I'm actually really disappointed. Um, because this is what I saw uh, when League of Legends actually started. When in, in beta, League of Legends, a lot of the heroes were kind of just a bunch of abilities put together all into one. Really no no synergy, no no they didn't really work together, they were kind of just bloop. And as Riot Games got more popular and started making more and more heroes, some of their heroes were actually really well made. Um, like I forget her name. <laughs> I should probably do more research. But she's the lady on the 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 the, the boar. The lady on the boar, you know, that only you know that one. <laughs> she actually had really interesting design. All of her abilities work together, and specifically the passive. I know I've gone about this in every fucking episode, but League of Legends is unique because of their passive mechanic. Not really nothing else. Their passive mechanic is where the game shines. And it's really unfortunate when Riot Games makes a hero that doesn't really have an interesting passive. Or they could be interesting, but they don't really interact with any of her abilities at all. And I'm not talking about forced synergy where like, you know, it applies a debuff, and then your next move deals more damage to debuff targets. Not necessarily like that, but this really just... It, it provides kind of a soft synergy. Um, like, it, it works into... It, it, it refines her game's, uh, gameplay style, rather than interacting necessarily with the other abilities. So, she heals over time every time she hits somebody, and she's a guy that hits a lot of people, so she heals over time a lot, you know? It's, it's kind of lackluster. And the fact that it's blatantly just Omni Slash, eh, before you start hating, I know, I know that Gensu and I believe Yule are working on League of Legends, and I know they created Juggernaut from Dota, and I know Ice Frog isn't the original creator of Dota, trust me, I know this shit. But still, they know that it's already in another game, two games, three games actually, since Heroes of New Earth has it as well. So just, like come up with new ideas like I know it was your idea eight years ago but just come up with something new I don't really get it um, so yeah I really don't like the hero um, it seems like one of those heroes where they took an idea let's make a fencing character and then made skills to go with it not necessarily the other way around and I think the other way around is a lot better when you take a gameplay uh, style or just the way a hero is gonna is gonna work and then you create a theme around that, that's when heroes really start to shine. Um, <clears throat> excuse my voice. Fairly hoarse tonight, but we'll fix that. And on that note, we're going to be going over to Heroes of New Earth, which actually, surprisingly enough, has a ton of news. This is the uh, this is what you get when you type in heroesofnewearth.com. It is what uh, you get redirected to, and it is the 100 Hero event. Heroes of New Earth is actually coming up on 100 heroes, and, you know, it's getting up there with Dota, because originally Heroes of New Earth had what? It actually says right over here. Originally Heroes of New Earth had 24 heroes, and at the time, Dota had like 90-something. Um, oh, excuse me. So having Heroes of New Earth get up into the 100s uh, is actually really interesting, because if you look at Dota 1, it still really only has around 100 heroes. So in the time in like a span of like a year or two years, Heroes of New Earth has matched Dota, um, but that is actually at a cost because they've be been creating heroes so frequently that they don't necessarily have enough time to really refine them, like uh, like Dota has. But 
for the 100 hero event, what they're doing is they are putting a 75% gold coin sale for all heroes in the game, in the, ca in the cash shop right now. They are giving all players um, double coins, silver coins that is, after today. They're doing giveaways on their social networks, such as Facebook and Twitter. And uh, they're doing the Community vs. S2 event, which they've done before, which is... <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading stream chat. Um, it's nice to have stream chat for once. Thanks, guys. <laughs> but what they do with the community versus S2 is S2 will actually create a team of five and go into matchmaking and face off against players. And if a team actually beats the S2 team, something happens. I believe what happened last time was they gave 16 silver coins to every person in the game every time they lost a match. So it kind of created um, reasons for people to go and uh bs2 besides just bragging rights but um mm, okay so it says the stakes are higher than higher than ever before every time s2 loses a game each and every member of the community online at the time gets closer and closer to winning prizes such as exclusive symbols silver coins and a brand spanking new alt avatar now i'm gonna have to disagree with that because it doesn't necessarily sound like it's greater than before because greater like last time it was you get a certain amount of coins this time it seems like you have a chance to get a bunch of different stuff and i guess that really is subjective as to which one you want more but um you get free shit for beating them so that's awesome um and the throwback heroes event is actually interesting but i'm gonna have to read it because i don't necessarily understand it right now um this is actually for free-to-play players only um it says, attention free-to-play players, we've got a hundred heroes, and we aren't afraid to show it. <laughs> to, uh, to celebrate this milestone, we're jumping back in time. The first ever Han heroes will become the rotating hero pool starting Friday. Um, gain access to all 24 original heroes. Now, I don't necessarily know if this means that all free-to-play players are going to gain access to all original 24 heroes, or whether the hero... <clears throat> excuse me. The free hero pool will consist only of the 24 original heroes for this week. Um, I don't actually know what that means. It's interesting either way. If they give away 24 free heroes to everyone, that'll be amazing, but I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it. But um, if you're free to play, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy the game. But I don't want to brag, but Legacy is where it's at. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck this means, but <laughs> yeah, I bought, I bought a Legacy account for $10. Um... Actually, last last Christmas, yeah. Not last Christmas, but last last Christmas. <clears throat> but I've been playing since beta, so... Uh, yeah, that gives me some kind of cred. And down at the bottom, it says that they will be giving away 100,000 gold coins. And I have to scroll up to read the, the, the quest text. <laughs> okay, it says here... <clears throat> each weekday, starting Monday, February... Blah, which is today. Until Friday, March... Blah, we're going to give away one thousand ten dollar coin gold coin packages. All you have to do to qualify is play and win one game of matchmaking in that day, and we'll randomly select one thousand winners and announce them. That's actually really interesting. And yes, I do have green walls. Thanks. <laughs> um, so they're pretty much just giving away gold coins, which is awesome. Um, if you're not familiar with how Han works, it's similar to the League of Legends system in that you have uh, you have you have silver coins, which you gain from playing the game, which you can use on stuff in the cash shop, and you have gold coins, which is literally just you buy them, and uh, they do the same thing, except you can pay real money instead of playing. Um, so that's cool, all around awesome, but I want to point out one thing. If you look in the middle of the screen, behind all the text, <coughs> you can see these two heroes. Um, I don't necessarily know if they're two heroes separately or what, but they are actually, or they represent the new hero that's coming out, the 100th hero in Heroes of New Earth, who we will go over to here. His name is Kinesis, which means he's going to be a telekinetic character. I'm sorry, S2, I love you guys, but your naming is kind of goofy. <laughs> um, his name's Kinesis. He's a dude, uses his mind, does shit, bam! And I'll show you right there. What I'm guessing is that... 
I, I can't actually show you by pointing. Fuck. Um, I use my cursor. This guy is probably going to be the basic form, and this guy is probably going to be his ultimate form. You know, like his ult, like a uh, like war beast. He's going to turn into something. But that's just me guessing, speculation. I don't actually know. But what I do know is what the icons are going to look like for his skills. Uh, it says here he's a ranged intelli intelligence hero who uses his surroundings to mercil mercilessly pummel his enemies. <clears throat> the more havoc he wrecks, the harder it is for his enemies to take him down. Okay, so that kind of implies he's going to have some sort of, I don't want to say tanking abilities, because the Heroes of New Earth community hates the word tanking, but some sort of making him tankier ability. Um... Let's look at them real quick. His Q ability is called Static Smash. Probably going to be a nuke. Just going out there on a limb. Uh, telekinetic, telekinetic Control. Going to be CC. And it's going to have dual functions because there's two icons for it. Makes sense. Um, his third one is going to be his tanking ability. No idea what it's going to do. And his ultimate probably has something to do with this guy right here. Mr. Zealot <laughs> from StarCraft 2. <clears throat> I do have to apologize. My voice is really hoarse today. Um... Do, 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 do. And that's pretty much it, guys. Oh, fuck. I just forgot. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, I totally forgot we were supposed to be announcing a the Dota 2 beta key today. Totally blanked on that one. Um, but what we'll do is we'll email the guy tonight, whoever wins, and we'll send it to him anyway, and we'll just announce it next episode. Um, so you will get your beta key tonight. Don't worry. I can't believe I forgot that, but whatever. Um, so that's pretty much it for the news for this week. If you guys want to see more stuff by us, you can check out our YouTube page. And I say us loosely because it's mostly my shit, but I do have guests on every every week. Um, if you want to see <laughs> if you want to see more stuff by us, you can check out our YouTube page at youtube.com/user/theaosstation, or you can watch us live every when um what the fuck is today Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern or 7 p.m. Pacific, uh, which is at twitch.tv slash the AOS station. If you want to keep up to date on what we're doing, and by us I mean me, you can uh, follow me at at pandamanana, which is at panda plus manana. If you speak Spanish, it's the same, but pronounced differently without the doink over the N. So it's pandamanana, uh, at pandamanana on Twitter. And if you want to follow us on Facebook, uh, it's Pan Manana's fan page or whatever. I'll put the link in the description. It's also on the channel um, homepage. And if you guys want to send in viewer questions, uh, you can send them to aosstation at gmail.com and we will read them at the end of the show. And if you want to... What? What else? Oh, you can also leave them in the, in the comment section on YouTube if you want or you can send us a private message on YouTube. That's pretty much it for me tonight, guys. I will see you guys next Monday. Peace out.